Welcome to a very special episode of Transport Evolve's Tesla News Roundup, as we look at some highlights from the company's 2021 year-end earnings call, which, unlike the last few, included Tesla CEO Elon Musk. And for that reason, this video is a little longer than we'd like. But before we get there, there are a couple other stories worth mentioning. Tesla is no stranger to big milestones, and this week we learned of an awfully big one. Bloomberg and some of its partners have crowned Tesla's Fremont production facility, quote, the most productive automobile factory in the United States. It snatched the title from Toyota's Georgetown facility in Kentucky. That's quite the accolade, but even more so when you remember that 10 years ago, Tesla was producing just 400 cars per week. For Tesla fans, the news is even sweeter, as Tesla's Fremont facility was once the GM Toyota Numi plant. Tesla purchased the facility and much of the production equipment inside, converting the factory for its own use. Doing so required some compromises, and thus Tesla's Fremont plant will never be as efficient or well-designed as Tesla's ground-up gigafactories in Shanghai, Berlin, and Texas, all of which are poised to outstrip Fremont's output in the next year or two. The next story is a bit of a tricky one, because first off, just talking about upsets a lot of Tesla fans, and second, because of the nature of Tesla's communication strategy, getting concrete information on it has been a bit of a challenge. I'm talking about the ongoing saga of Tesla heating issues. These first came to light last winter in the Model Y and newest Model 3 cars, which shipped with the more efficient heat pump system in place of a traditional, more range-sucking resistive heater. Heat pumps use less battery energy to keep the cabin warm, but as Alec from Technology Connections explained on his channel, link below, heat pumps are less awesome when it's super cold outside. Tesla owners in places where sub-freezing temperatures are the norm have noticed that their cars haven't been keeping them as warm. This winter, there have been some high-profile stories of cold cars making headlines. As someone who drove a vintage car with barely functioning heat through multiple main winters, I'm sympathetic. And while heated seats and a heated steering wheel can go a long way, having to scrape the inside of your windshield as you're driving is never fun. At the moment, it seems that a vent door under the car that allows air to get to the heat pump heat exchanger may be sticking or freezing open, which could cause the system to cut the heat pump or make the heat pump unable to do its job adequately. The whole thing feeds into the perception that Tesla designs its cars with California and Texas in mind, and those of us living in colder places are sometimes an afterthought. As of recording, Tesla's released a firmware update that company CEO Elon Musk says fixes the problem, but there continue to be reports of heat pump issues even among owners who've received the update, and service centers replacing heat pump sensors or even entire heat pump systems is not unheard of as a result of the issue. There are also limited reports that early Model 3s, such as the one my family owns, may also be experiencing issues with their resistive heaters since the most recent firmware update, and those issues can get very expensive, but we're going to wait and see what, if anything, comes of that before covering it in any depth. That brings us to the first of our stories out of Tesla's end-of-year earnings report and call. So, as Kai Rizdahl of NPR would say, let's do the numbers. Tesla had an absolutely record-breaking year. Again. I told you in the first Tesla News Roundup that the company produced nearly a million vehicles last year, but the exact number is 930,422, of which more than 97% were Model 3 and Model Y. That means Tesla nearly doubled its production figures year-on-year, year, and demand is certainly keeping up. The company only has a six-day supply of vehicles on hand, which is far off from the 60-day supply that's considered to be an industry standard. But that said, this has not been a standard a couple of years, and most automakers are struggling to keep their stock supply up. Keeping with cars for a moment, Tesla increased its supercharger locations by 35% last year. Today, there are 3,500 supercharger locations out there, with about 31,500 connectors between them. Tesla also opened up 25% more store and service locations, and increased its mobile service fleet to 1,281 units. During Tesla's earnings call, which Elon Musk was present for, Elon said that Tesla, quote, shortchanged its energy storage programs last year by focusing on vehicle allocations during the global semiconductor chip shortage. That said, Tesla deployed 3.99 gigawatt hours of energy storage. That's both 
power walls, and commercial stroke industrial energy storage products, and plans to grow that figure in the coming year. Musk did say that the plan is to reach more than a terawatt hour of energy storage deployment per year, though couldn't say how quickly that will happen. The 345 megawatt hours of solar installations Tesla completed in 2021 are the highest we've seen since 2017, which was the year Tesla acquired Solar City and remains the company's best year to date for solar installations. On to dollars and dimes. Tesla's automotive revenue was 47.2 billion US dollars, of which 1.47 billion dollars came from the sale of regulatory credits. That's slightly less than last year, but far higher than any year before 2020, showing that Tesla continues to help legacy automakers meet their regulatory obligations. Essentially, without Tesla, many of those automakers would be paying huge fines. Tesla's automotive gross margin for last year was the highest it's ever been, at 29.3%. High automotive margins are usually a good indicator that the cost of production has gone down, but that gets a bit less clear when you take into account that Tesla increased the price of its vehicles repeatedly over the course of the year, with some model sticker prices going up by more than $7,000. Net income for the year was $5.52 billion US dollars, or $4.90 per share, non-adjusted. But using the adjusted method, profit was $7.64 billion US dollars, or $6.78 per share. The takeaway? Tesla is more profitable now than it has ever been in its relatively short history. As to this year and Tesla's future, not to mention those Cybertruck leaks we've all been seeing. Well, if you were hoping for some exciting news of upcoming models, you're in for a disappointment. Elon Musk confirmed on the call that Tesla will not be introducing any new vehicles for 2022. He said that there would be engineering and development work being done on Cybertruck, Roadster, and Semi throughout the next year, with hopes, but not a commitment, to bring some or all of them to market in 2023. On Cybertruck in particular, he noted that there's still a lot of new technology that will take time to work through, adding that figuring out how to build the truck at a price that people are willing to pay is still an unsolved problem. We're interested to see how some Cybertruck reservation holders received this news, as many had been hoping to get their trucks this year. Musk was also asked during the earnings call about plans for a future $25,000 EV, and made it clear that Tesla has enough on its plate already, so there's no current plan or design for a production vehicle, though he did say there would be one quote, someday. On the more positive side of things, it was confirmed that Tesla Model Ys are coming out of Austin, Texas with 4680 form factor structural batteries, which are built in-house by Tesla. The company expects 4680 equipped cars to be in the hands of customers by the end of the first quarter 2022. Interestingly, we also found out that the 4680 form factor isn't being used for any iron chemistry based battery cells, and it doesn't sound like it will be. Based on what we could tell from the earnings call, that sounds like a physics issue rather than an economic one. Interestingly though, Tesla somewhat surprisingly stated that battery supply constraints were not a factor in 2021 production and aren't expected to be in 2022 either, although Tesla executives warned that could change in 2023 when semiconductor chip supply is expected to no longer be a production bottleneck. If you're at all familiar with Tesla and Elon Musk, you'll be unsurprised to hear that Tesla's full self-driving is still a big focus for the company's CEO and features prominently in projections about the company's future balance sheet. Elon affirmed his high expectations, stating that he would be, quote, shocked if we don't achieve full self-driving safer than a human this year, end quote. I suspect that whether you believe that will happen or not has a lot more to do with your faith in Elon Musk than in the technology itself. Nobody on the team has spent time with FSD Beta yet, although that's happening soon. I know some FSD beta users who believe from their experience with the software that robotaxis will be here by this time next year, and I know others who think it's still years away. From his comments during the call, Elon is clearly in the first group, and Tesla as a company is all in on the promise of FSD, projecting that the program, rather than building cars, will become the biggest income source for Tesla in years to come. In fact, Elon believes FSD will show the quote, biggest asset value increase of any asset class in history. 
During the call, Elon at times appeared to become frustrated with people's lack of understanding of how radically he sees transportation being changed by autonomous vehicles. In response to another question about Tesla not building a $25,000 car, he said, quote, it's apparent from the questions that the gravity of full self-driving isn't fully appreciated, end quote. Interestingly, Elon also stated unequivocally that FSD being attached to an individual rather than a vehicle is a non-starter, so no transferring it between your cars over time. That's something many people had asked for, but I'd say it's not likely. There's a ton more that came up in the call, but the last thing I want to touch on is Optimus, or more fully, Optimus Subprime. That's the name that seems to be sticking for what Tesla first called its Tesla bot during Tesla AI Day 2021. At the time, Elon Musk was clear he wanted Optimus to enter into production as a future Tesla product, and during the earnings call we learned just how serious Tesla is. In fact, Optimus was mentioned alongside Cybertruck, Roadster, and Semi as being part of Tesla's engineering and design work for 2022, with all four products hopefully going to production in 2023. We fully expect Tesla to start taking pre-orders this year, but remember, we're talking about Elon time here when it comes to production and delivery timelines. So what do you think? Do Tesla's fantastic financials bode well for its future and or the future of EVs? Do you think we'll see robo-taxi level FSD before the new year? And are you going to put a deposit on a Tesla Optimus if it becomes available? Let us know in the comments below. That's it for today. If you liked the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to leave your thoughts below or in our free to join Discord chat room. There's a link in the video description. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to this channel and our other channel, Transport Evolve Take Two, and give the bell a gentle ding to make sure you're told when our next video goes live. Thanks on behalf of the entire T crew, go out to the folk on my right for being our $15 to $49 a month patrons. Special thanks to our $50 a month patrons, Chris Maxwell, Brian Newton, Jason Boder, Dave Kitchen, Michael Goad, Ricky Long, Andrew Martin, Guido Trajada, Brophy Wolf, Tesla Nagong, Gordon C., Stephen O'Donoghue, Kyle Hodson, Anthony Coates, Raging Fellows, Rory Litwin, Anonymous Freak, Jim Burness, and Denny Hyde. And our deepest gratitude to our $100 a month Patreon supporters, Marcel Ward, Reggie Watts, Joe Bresney, JP Figerback, Will Grayland, Matthew Drobnak, John Lyons, Christopher Lee Jones, Laura Reynolds, Paul Conway, Ellery Hensley, and Ian. Feeling left out? You can join Patreon in the link below or show us your support through Bitcoin, Kofi, or our cool swag store. Thanks for joining me, and as always, keep evolving!